Okay, today I'm going to be seeing if I get shocked if I touch electrified DI water. So this is a warning before I do this video, please do not try anything you're about to see me do at home, even if you think you know about electricity. Some of the stuff I'm doing can definitely kill you. Please don't do it. So I showed in a previous video, when you put electronics in DI water, they're still able to function. So I wanted to take that a bit further and test with higher voltages if you would get shocked if you touched DI water that was electrified. So first I'll test it with a 120 volt wall source and then I'll test it with higher voltage like 3000 volts. Okay, so what I have set up here is just some tap water first. I have a light bulb here with the cord splice. This is a very dangerous setup. Again, do not try this. So let's see what happens when we put this in regular tap water. Okay, I've dimmed the lights now. Let's see if it turns on the light bulb with just tap water. Little bit. So with just tap water, you can see the light bulb flickering a little bit. That means there is electricity getting through. So the way that electricity is still able to flow through this is because even though this is pure tap water, tap water is not actually pure. There's a lot of ions in it. And you can see how much ions affect the water if I put some salt in here. So salt is sodium chloride. So now that I've put salt in the water, there's a lot of ions. And what ions do is they carry the charge from one wire to the other wire. So now let's see what happens to the light bulb when there's more ions in the water. Okay, dim the lights again, let's see. <laughs> lights it no problem. This is what happens when you let all of the current go through one of the little tiny wires in the main wire. But now let's see what happens if I use deionized water. So this is water that has had all of its ions removed. So I've cleaned this out really well. I'm putting in the deionized water. So this is type two lab grade deionized water. Let's see with the deionized water now, if we get any flickering at all of the light. Nothing. I touch the wires, then it goes on. But if I keep it away, nothing happens at all. So at this voltage, the deionized water now is a complete insulator. Okay, so let's see if the same thing happens with 3000 volts instead of 120 volts. So what I have here is 3000 volts at the end of these wires, but instead of a light bulb, because I don't have a light bulb that can work with 3000 volts, I have something that I made to be able to know if electricity is flowing. So what this is, is one of these cans will be positive and one of these cans will be negative, and this tab in the middle here will be neutral at first. And when I start the electricity flowing, what it will do is it will attract this soda tab here because it will induce an electrostatic charge to it and it will get attracted to one of the sides of the can. And once it touches the can, then the charge from this can will, will go into the tab. Now the tab will be charged the same, so it will repel and it will go to the other side. And once it touches this side, it will neutralize with this side and become the same charge and it will repel from this side and it'll go back and forth and it'll ring. So it's kind of like a little bell that's charged with electrostatic electricity. Okay, so I have here tap water now. Let's see if with tap water our electrostatic bell works, meaning is there electricity flowing through here? Here we go. Yep, it's working. <laughs> So 3,000 volts easily makes electricity flow through here. And it works about the same if I just connect the wires. It's about the same. Doesn't matter whether it's in the water or the wire. Okay, now let's try 3,000 volts with deionized water. So what's your guess? Do you think the electricity will still flow through the deionized water at 3000 volts? Let's see. <laughs> yep, totally fine, like it's not even there. 
Look how cool that is, it just wiggles back and forth. We'll see if this will give me a shock through the water. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay, no shock. But this is easily going through my finger. That's not shocking me. So the charge is going through my finger and I don't even feel it. So the reason it wasn't shocking me before with the cans is because the cans weren't actually connected. They were connected through the swinging tab, but there was no solid connection between the two. And so I could transfer the charge, but it never felt like a static shock to me. So now let's see if I just connect the wires directly, if I get a shock when I touch it. So I have one electrode connected here and the other one in the water with DI water. Let's see if I get shocked. Three, two, one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so it is shocking me, but it's not that bad actually. I can feel it buzz through me for a little bit, but not terrible. And that's because this is deionized water. And so the amount of current going through my fingers is not that much. But let's see what happens when I put salt in it. Okay, but if you came to watch me get shocked by 3000 volts, here you go. Three, two, one. Ah, oh, gosh. <laughs> so it can even easily go through the ground. So I have one end connected to the ground here and I'm standing on the ground. I just grab this. <laughs> so, I got shocked because the tab touched both cans at the same time. That's not what I was trying to show you. I was trying to show you that it connects the circuit even if you're just standing on the ground. So this shows you why it's so dangerous near high voltage power lines because eventually anything starts becoming a conductor at high voltages. So at this voltage, even a piece of wood becomes conductive. Turn it on. <laughs> so the reason why high voltages are so dangerous is because current is actually the thing that kills you, but voltage is proportional to current. So if you have 10 times the voltage, you get 10 times the current. And another reason is because high voltages also cause dielectric breakdown. So something that normally doesn't have any current flowing through it at all can suddenly have a lot of current go through it when a dielectric breakdown occurs. And that's when a spark happens. So when a dielectric breakdown occurs, it creates a plasma. And plasmas are very conductive. So a great amount of current can flow through the plasma. And you can get these dielectric breakdowns to occur when you put the electrodes closer together because that concentrates the electric field. So before I wasn't getting sparks to occur, but when I put the electrodes closer together, then I get the sparks. So here I'm showing salt water, and here's what happens in DI water. What's really cool is that you can also see that there's water bridges that form. So when water is exposed to high voltages, it causes electrostatic charges to build up in the water itself, and so it's attracted to the electrodes. So you can see how it sticks to it. If I, if I turn it off, it drops. The interesting thing about being shocked is that you never really think about what's going on with your fingers that touch the water. So, so right where the electrodes are, it's forming some hydrogen ions and some hydroxide ions. And basically what that means is it's forming acid and base around the electrodes. And when you get shocked with these voltages at around 120 volts, what happens is that your finger is now the electrode. And so your fingers or wherever you're getting shocked is actually forming hydrogen gas and oxygen gas wherever you're touching it. And the reason you get flesh wounds is twofold. You get flesh wounds when you get shocked badly with low voltages because you get burned and also you get chemical burns. And the chemical burns come from the acid and the base that's forming on your finger. But what stops you from being killed with a high voltage device like this or like a stun gun or something 
what happens is it charges capacitors and the capacitors can only hold a little bit of charge and then it discharges it quickly. And so it's a very high voltage but only a tiny little bit of current. I hope you liked this video. If you did, remember to subscribe and you can hit the bell button to be notified when my latest video is out. Leave me any comments or ideas you want me to try in the comments section. I'll try to look them over. And as always, I'll see you next time.